Let me start by saying that linked lists are awesome. Also, linked lists is a data structure much like arrays, stacks, and queues, but works in a much different way. See, it consists of collection of nodes that points to each other, which together represents a sequence, not quite a list. The cool thing about it is that you can use it to implement other data structures like stacks and queues. The best way to understand it is to picture a train. The train has the head and the wagons and they are linked. I can remove, replace and add new wagons, but I must always have the head. The head is where everything starts from and each item in a sequence is called node. Because of how it works, random access is not possible. You cannot just grab the third or the tenth item directly like you can do with a race. Access an item is done linearly starting from the head. Linked lists can be single or double linked. You can have nodes that only points to the next node or nodes that point to both previous and next nodes. And that allows you to traverse in both directions. You can have circular linked lists and these can be single or double. And the only difference is that the tail node, aka last node, points to the head. And linked lists can also be sorted, which can be super convenient at times. Common operations are push to add to the end, insert to add at any location, remove to remove from any location. You can two string it, get size, check if it's empty and access the head as well. I find myself often adding methods for ease of use into my implementation so you are not stuck to only these operations. Common application of this data structure could be implement other data structures like stack, queues, and graphs. You can use to maintain directory names to create a music player, an image viewer. Circular linked list is great for circular queues. Your operating system may put applications in a circular linked list and cycle through them to give each a time to execute. Dynamic memory allocation, arithmetic operations or long integers are some of the many ways you can use this data structure to do awesome stuff. Now let me show you all this in code where I dive into implementations in more details that will make it fun to explore this data structure even deeper. And you have lots of to learn by simply understand how it works under the hood. Thanks for watching. Catch you there. Bye bye.